Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe to the RSS feed, and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. Have you listened to the Creating Wealth series? I mean, from the beginning. If not, you can go ahead and get book one that shows one through 20 in digital download. These are advanced strategies for wealth creation. For more information, go to Jason Hartman. Dot com. It's my pleasure to welcome my old friend, Sinan Kanatsis, here, and he is chairman and CEO of KCOM, a public and government relations firm, as well as chairman and founder of the Internet Marketing Association and many other things as well. He is a fantastic marketer. He's done a great job marketing his business through public speaking and, of course, public relations and Internet. That is his specialty, and it's just great to have him here today. I think he'll share a lot of good information on how you can increase your exposure, whether it be through social media, any form of internet or the platform as well. Sinan, welcome. How are you? Thank you so much, Jason. Great to be on your show. There's one person who's done marketing as good or if not better than myself, uh, it would be yourself. And I've learned a lot from you and your success with your business and the, the great name you've got across the nation. It's a pleasure to be on your show and looking forward to helping your audience. Well, thanks so much, Sinan. It's funny how we met. Maybe we'll just share that with the listeners because it's just such a funny story. I was working on starting a web-based kind of press release distribution system, and I saw an article in the Orange County Business Journal about you doing the same thing. Talk about coincidence. So I called you up, and we just met after that and, and hit it off, and it's just been great knowing you all these years. Tell us about some of the trends that are really shaping the marketing world, Sinan, and how they're affecting and how small to medium-sized companies can use them? Well, I'm going to even go further back. I'm going to talk about the economy. And as I've been following a lot of economic trending and just looking at global data as well as just domestic, you know, there really seems to be a collective economic rebound that's going on. And we're feeling it, uh, you know, strongly, not just in the marketing industry, but among the 500 plus clients that we represent. We see lots of surges happening in technology, services, manufacturing across multiple SIC codes. What that offers the marketing industry is a lot of business opportunities. So you've got people that want to market a product or a service and people that want to communicate a, a product or service either to the consumer level or to the business level and people need these tools to get their message out. The opportunity to all your listeners is the marketing world has shifted dramatically over the last five years because of the internet medium. The internet medium has really just neutralized the game field. So small businesses can appear to be billion dollar businesses with a really nice website, a content management system, a strong e-newsletter, and a very strong social media presence. You don't necessarily have to have a multi-million dollar marketing budget to really create a name for yourself. You just need to understand how Google Analytics works, how social media works, and how to build a, a robust website with strong content. So I want to you know, start by encouraging your, your listeners to challenge themselves to creating these tools for themselves. You know, I started my business as myself out of my parents' sewing room, and all we had was a website and a newsletter. Well, 15 years later, we still have that same newsletter that goes out every single month. And my database that started out with 16 people now is above 68,000 people that are influencers and buyers of our products and services. It has never cost us a dime to market. So the advertising industry has seen a tremendous convergence, and there are a few people that are admitting to that, 
but I feel confident enough to say that you can create a zero-based dollar budget marketing plan for yourself your personal brand or your service. Yeah, you know, Sinan, that is so true nowadays. I mean, the opportunity has never been greater for the little guy. This is the true democracy of business, what we've got going on right now. I mean, it's funny because I, I, I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying that and thinking about it because it's just such a world of opportunity. I mean, as challenging as things are out there nowadays, at the same time, there are huge opportunities for entrepreneurs to really get their name out, to make a difference, to get their message out cause marketers as well i haven't seen you for a little while but the last time we had lunch seen on you said to me something really really telling and i've never forgotten it you said that when you're talking to these fortune 1000 companies that you deal with everybody wants to know about internet marketing where you're you're called a pr firm but it's funny how that has even changed in the pr world much more so in advertising but pr has changed as well hasn't it from from traditional public relations to internet marketing. Everybody wants to be in internet marketing now. Tell us about that. Well, Jason, I mean, you were one of the first people that I knew of with an iPhone and an iPad, and the medium has shifted. So in order to get public, making the public aware of content and communication, you need to be able to get it to the medium that they're using. The public is now using tablets, laptops, more than ever in the history of time. And that convergence is going to continue to grow. As you can see, every Starbucks, every coffee bean, every McDonald's in the nation now is offering Wi-Fi. That allows people to be mobile with their content. So the future of public relations is really in Internet marketing. And so the public relations practitioner of the past who used to call on you know, traditional print newspapers and magazines are now making sure that content is being delivered to e-zines and Internet-based content vehicles like MSNBC and CNN, which are grabbing a majority of content. Uh, and so what, what this also provides your listeners is an opportunity to provide their own sort of uh, you know, magazines. So I don't necessarily need to just read the news on CNN's website. I can also read the news of what my friend Jason Hartman is posting on his Facebook page because he has uh, a lot of influence in the real estate markets, and his opinion to me matters more than what I'm reading in the Wall Street Journal's real estate section because I don't necessarily know that reporter. This is a very important fact that's happening across the nation around the world is the credibility of content is shifting away not just from publications but also to people that have strong followings on Twitter and Facebook. And so this opens up a, a Pandora's box of media for, for a small business or a business owner to actually go in and, and sort of create their own marketing message without having to spend money on advertising. So, so there's, a, there's a big, big, big opportunity there uh, for, for your listeners to, to create you know, some, some market share for themselves without having to spend any money on advertising. Yeah, it, it really is a phenomenal time, no question about it. And you know, Sinan, your email newsletter is just, it's fantastic. What tips would you have for people listening that want to market themselves? Of course, they can do it with the mediums that are already established, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And that's a very easy way. In fact, I was talking with another one of my show guests about this recently, how Facebook is just a great way to sort my news and feed to me the things that you know, in which I am interested because all of the people I know and trust, they sort the news by posting things to their pages and I see them in my news feed. Totally different concept of how to get news versus you know, the old way of turning on the television or something. With your email newsletter, it's it's just got such a great format. I mean, do you have any like real specific tips on how to, number one, build a database and number two, how to create the the electronic or the digital piece that goes to that audience. So one of my great sayings that I like to say is the greater your network, the higher your net worth. And really, if you want to increase your exposure, you want to get as many business cards as possible. And any business that you're doing, you know, be it real estate or if you're trying to sell salt shakers, whatever that may be, you just need to know people and you need to let them know that you're a specialist in doing something. And what I've done from the very first day, even when back in my days at college at Chapman University, was I got business cards of my colleagues, uh, my teachers, the guest speakers that came in professional, people that I wanted to do business with or, or become like. And and so I put them into an email database and I just started growing that because if you give me your business card, then I consider that an opt-in. 
and I will send you my newsletter, and you can decide whether or not you want to receive it or opt out. If the content is really good and the visuals are very exciting, then people are going to want to keep your newsletter. Some of the tips that I would recommend to your listeners is personalize it. So when the newsletter comes, make sure in the subject line or in the actual body of the newsletter it says, Good morning, Jason, or good afternoon, Jason. And so it's greeting you by first name. So you have a higher likelihood, at least an 18% chance higher, that you're going to actually open and read through the newsletter. The next thing you want to do is have content that's educational and not salesy. So you want to make sure that your content is, is really something that's not promoting yourself, but it's promoting the industry that you're talking about. So in, in essence, as, as what you do, Jason, you can be talking about real estate trends on the East Coast. You could talk about the median house in Arkansas. You can talk about all sorts of different data that builds credibility around your brand and who you are. So to your listeners, I challenge you to think about how you can be an educational person, a thought leader in what you do, and make that content really specific around education. Then towards the bottom, you can promote a couple different services or products, but don't make it cheesy. Don't make it salesy. Drop the Tony Robbins and make it something that is, is, resonates well with people. And, and it's okay to give away a little bit. In our newsletter, once in a while, we'll give away an iPad. We'll give away some Starbucks gift cards. And by giving things away, people are more susceptible of listening, and you're able to build trust with your prospective customer. And once they evaluate the content that's coming to them, their, their likelihood of working with you is much, much greater. So those are the tips and techniques that we would recommend. And the visual aspects of the newsletter are just as important as the content. You have to make sure that the graphics you're using stimulate the eye. And you know that stimulation, Las Vegas is fantastic at stimulation. You walk down or drive down Las Vegas Boulevard, you you see stimulation everywhere. And what you want to do is learn from that stimulation and apply that to what you do because as consumers, we respond to stimulation. And those are the things that you have to think about in your e-newsletter. And the final aspect is portability. With about 35% of Internet surfing now happening on iPhones and Androids and Blackberries, it's important that your newsletter can display on these portable devices. And a lot of times people forget about portability and mobility. And it's make, making sure that your newsletter displays on these mobile devices, especially the tablet generation. They are truly replacing laptops. So you have to make sure that your newsletter is being seen on these tablets in a correct environment. And uh, a company called Knowledge Marketing, knowledgemarketing.com, they're very strong in this area, and we use them for all of our e-newsletters, and they're a fantastic organization to use for email distribution. So there's a very long-winded answer to your short question, Jason. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Another thing seen on, on the database side of it that you, you just did so well, I mean, this was just a brilliant stroke, and you did it a long time ago too, and that is that you started a, a trade association in your area of expertise and your area of interest, and that's the Internet Marketing Association. You're the founder of that. Tell the listeners, if you would, a little bit about how that idea came to be and how you grew it and what you're doing with it now. This is an idea of entrepreneurism to encourage your listeners that if they've got a good idea, pull over to the side of the road, write it down, and look into it. And that's basically how the Internet Marketing Association was born. There were a lot of organizations in the year 2000, like the Public Relations Society of America or the American Marketing Association, that requested me to come talk about Internet trends and how they relate to their respective industries. And I thought, you know what, I wonder who's doing the Internet Marketing Association. Well, we looked around, we couldn't find one, so we established it, we trade marked it, and we've been doing events for the last 10 years. And so we've actually evolved into the largest professional association of internet marketers. And in order to be an internet marketer, in our perspective, it's, you know, you, you've got to have an education, and you've got to be somewhat a, a business owner or interested in business or in the marketing field or in sales or the CEO of a small business. That all applies. So we've got 330,000 members now that has uh, grown consistently. We've had our largest surge in the last two years. Uh, as you know, you know, with brands like Facebook and Google and Twitter, that has helped expand our industry. So there are more people now than ever that want content from us. So we've got some fantastic partnerships with analysts that cover this industry. 
industry, and we provide white papers and articles to our members. We also have a webinar series which are with one of our academic partners, University of California, Irvine, and we're providing a series of webinars on topics like e-newsletters and, and web-based communications and organic search engine optimization and social media. And we're having hundreds if not thousands of people sign up and view these webinars. And this content is invaluable because it's educational material and they're able to apply it to their respective businesses. And we're also introducing our professional certification, which is something that professionals that want to get certified in Internet marketing can take take our course and they, they receive a, a, a plaque and a certificate that, that gives them credentials that they can promote to their employer and to their colleagues. And at the same time, we promote the, the student aspect of, of certification uh, with UCI. So we've been uh, referring lots of students and, and younger folks who want to actually get a, a, a degree certificate at the University of California, Irvine to, to them. So it's just been a fantastic uh, evolution, this association, and, and we are just getting started. Hey, Sinan, I know you need to go soon, but I want to give the listeners a couple quick tips on maybe two areas here, if you can. Number one, you are fantastic at creating partnerships with big respected brands and your recent partnership with IMA and UCI, congratulations on that one. That's a a huge credibility booster and audience expander. And then also SEO, since you mentioned that, just give the listeners, if you would, just a couple of quick tips on those things, the the partnerships with the big brands and so forth, and then also anything on SEO that you want to mention, search engine optimization. So being that KCOM was a small, you know, business, no one had really heard of it, even internet marketing association, you know, what we did was we marketed our brand through other brands. So in the subject of our newsletters, we would say eBay, Wells Fargo, and UCI present with IMA. And this is a a tactical, strategic approach that we use over the years that really elevated the credibility of our organization. So partnerships are invaluable. And what we do is we keep partnerships very loose because, you know, the minute you start getting things in writing and you get things really legal, you know, it becomes more and more difficult to have partnerships. So what we do is we have very loose ended partnerships to where we have the autonomy to be ourselves without having to be weighed down and we don't expect much from the partner as well and they they really kind of provide you know an area of strength that we may not have value to our members so to your audience I would recommend you know give some of what you do away for free to build a partnership with a brand that could perhaps carry you to the next level as a business. This has been sort of a, a secret uh, recipe in, in, in building our firms over the years that you know just kind of happened on its own. We didn't really think it through, but when we did start to promote some of the work we were doing for the larger brands we were representing, it really did elevate our company's credibility. Even to this day, if you go to kcom.com on our website, we display some of the brands that we're very proud of representing, including Wells Fargo, eBay, IBM, Oracle, and these types of brands have really elevated our agency status as an organization that can represent Fortune 500 companies. Think about how you can do that for your own business and always seek the permission of the brand that you are promoting because that is something that's very important when you're ever doing some type of partner-based branding. So going back to organic SEO or SEO, which is called search engine optimization, you know, this is just the, the wild, wild west of marketing. You know, you've got everyone who's got a gimmick and a product on how to do search engine marketing. Uh, we definitely are specialists in this area, and we can tell you exactly which route to take. We like to really pitch our clients on not spending any money on pay-per-click. What we like to promote is organic search engine marketing. So we have an office in India that does a lot of our engineering, and we have 15 full-time workers now that work three shifts, and they're the ones that are installing the metadata, which is like uh, HTML code on your website, and that's basically like food for the search engines. And it basically searches and it sees that code, and then it ranks your website based on the different levels of content that you have on your website. And we've become experts here. Our domestic office in Irvine that meets with our clients and actually takes them through and shows them what their competitors are doing and where the opportunities, the holes are to increase their search engine ranking. And it's amazing, Jason. I mean, we log into our data every day and look at our, our analytics for our clients, and we, 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 we go for all green every day, which is that it's increasing percentage-wise. And time and time again, 
with the 50 or so clients that we're doing search engine marketing for, we have had days that all 50 clients increase and that the whole page was green. And I actually shot a screenshot of it and I posted it on Facebook. And it only grew our business even more. But that's the truth. We've, we've cracked the code on how to get clients up higher on search engine ranking. And we share our secrets because we know it takes a lot of engineering, a lot of time, a lot of skill, and really, really, really good content writers to put all that together. And we welcome the market to take our secrets and grow the market because that only motivates us to diversify ourselves even more and to do things that are different in the search engine space. But for anyone with a website, search engine marketing, search engine optimization is more important than the website itself. So if there is anything I could be of assistance with, please don't hesitate to email me, call, or uh, write me, and there will be no cost for my advice, and I just like to help people. It is, it is a, a blast. And some, some great advice there. Sinan Kanatsis, Chairman and CEO of KCOM. The website is kcom.com. And thank you so much for sharing your insights today. We appreciate having you on the show. It's a pleasure, Jason. Thank you so much. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn how to finance your next big real estate deal, there's a show for that. If you want to learn more about food storage and the best way to keep those onions from smelling up everything else, there's a show for that. If you honestly want to know more about business ethics, there's a show for that. And if you just want to get away from it all and need to know something about world travel, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything. Only from JasonHartman.com or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at jasonhartman.com. This show offers very general information. Opinions of guests are their own. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.